Uh, I had you as a guest when we had a debate with Rabbi Harold Kushner, the man who wrote the best-selling book, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. And at that time, he was telling us about his 12-year-old son that died of a terrible disease, and it caused him to rethink what he believed about God. And he had to give up, he felt, one of the attributes of God. He kept, he held on to, God is all loving, but he gave up the fact that God is all powerful. God is so loving, he'd like to get involved, but he just can't, he can't help defeat evil in certain cases. So we got to help him. So he's taking that view, and you were, you were telling him why he didn't have to hold that view. But since that time, you have also experienced the death of one of your children, one of your daughters. And when you go through a tragedy like that, you really start to rethink all of your views. You test them. And people that are listening right now, they would probably want to ask you and say, when you went through that and you went back on the very things that you're explaining to us, did it work for you? Does it still make sense? Was it helpful for you? Is this something that really is what people need to latch on to? I remember that very well, uh, John. I remember saying to Rabbi Kushner, I uh, empathize with you, I sympathize with you, but you know, your God... Uh, is not the kind of God that can give you any ultimate comfort in this because uh, you are not e you're not even sure you'll see your son again because you didn't even believe that uh, he would uh, live on after death for sure. And I said, your God is not all-powerful and he can't bring uh, good out of uh, evil. So the kind of God you need is the kind of God who's in the Bible, who's all-powerful and all-good and all-knowing and, and can do something for your situation. Uh, never knowing at the time that I would go through uh, things that probably are as equally difficult or worse than Rabbi Kushner did. Since that time, uh, in 18 months, we lost a father, a mother, a sister, a brother-in-law, and our two closest friends. And I'd been a pastor for years, and I'd comforted people in their sorrow and in their suffering. Uh, but I wasn't ready for uh, the biggest uh, evil that ever hit me um, when our daughter died a tragic uh, death just two years ago. And um, it's just something, John, that you have to experience to understand. It's like a, a hundred uh, foot tall tidal wave coming at you and you know you can't swim. And I had to cast myself on the grace of God and trust that what I believed was really true. My grace is sufficient for you, the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12. And I would wake up at night uh, singing songs on the attributes of God. So God is uh, uh, light. God is good. Uh, God is eternal. God is gracious. Uh, it is well with my soul. Peace like a river. All these great hymns of the faith that talk about the attributes of God were the only comfort I had because everything human had uh, evaporated. Uh, the best things around me, father, mother, brothers, sisters, a and now daughter, uh, that tragedy was so great in our lives that we tested the grace of God. We tested the character of God, and uh, we found him to be faithful, absolutely um, unimaginably faithful to us and the grace of God brought us through that difficult uh, circumstance only because I knew that God was all loving and he had a good purpose for it. He was all powerful and he was going to bring something greater out of it and I was going to see my mother, my father, my sister, brother, daughter again someday in heaven because he could resurrect the dead and is going to resurrect them and that was the strength that kept us going and we made it through that very difficult